All right, this time we're going to be using an algorithm, uh, which is just an easier way to set up the problem sometimes to get it solved. It's the closer to the way that your parents have done these sort of multiplication of two-digit numbers, the old school way, but we're not quite there yet. But students, for you, it'll be closer to what we've been doing on the last few days, finding partial products and using arrays. So here we go. We'll be using 12 times 13 again. Here's your 12 and here's your 13, except I'm going to take this and flip it on its side. Uh, and you'll see why. It kind of better aligns with the way the problem presents itself, which I probably should have done since the beginning, but I've already thrown really through these videos and a little too late to fix them now. And yes, we still have our 10 by 10 block, the 100. We have two groups of 10s to make the 12, and we have the three groups of 10s to make the 13 with the ones filled in. But let's flip it on its side and see what that looks like. All right, so this is the 10 by 10. Here is the two uh, 2 by 10s. Here are the three 2 by 10s, and here are the 2 by 3 individuals. Let's label them. The green box represents the 10 by 10, so its, pr its partial product is 100. The purple box represents the 10 by 2, its partial product is 20. We've done all this before, right? The 10 by 3 block represents 30, and the 2 by 3 represents 6. Finally, your parents are saying, hey, this is something that looks familiar to me. And yes, it's an algorithm, but it's not going to quite be what you expect it to be yet. Here we have our four partial products, right? So what we're going to do first is multiply the 1 by the two numbers up here. And first we'll do 2 times 3. And of course, that's this area of the array, and it gives us a product of 6, a partial product of 6. And then we're going to do 2 times 1, but not 2 times 1. We're really doing 2 times 10, aren't we? It's 2 times 10. Just think of this as being a zero up here. This is the only weird part of this method. For a lot of you, this is going to work really, really well. But some of you, you're not, you're going to have a hard time forgetting that this three is actually a zero when you multiply the two by the second digit. So it's not two times one, it's two times 10. And two times 10 is 20, all right? So you just write it right underneath where you want to say. Now, we're going to multiply this 1 times a 3. But guess what? It's not a 1. It's a 10. Where is it coming from? It's coming from this piece right here. And it is a 10 multiplying by 3, right? So it's 10 times 3. Not 1 times 3. 10 times 3. And that product is 30. So just write it below the 6 and the 20. With me so far? And finally, we get to the 10 times 10. Here's the big piece right here. Forget about the 3 and the 2. Pretend that they're zeros. We've already multiplied them. That's why we can forget about them. Now we're taking care of 10 times 10. 10 times 10 is 100. Write it down below. Now we have our 1, 2, 3, 4 partial products, just like we did with the other methods, which, of course, we can add up. Add up the 1s add up the tens, add up the hundreds. And so, using that expanded algorithm, and it's expanded because it was really moving down, wasn't it? We can find out that 12 times 13 is 156.